Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. Uh, today we're going to have a shop day. I hadn't had a good shop day for you guys in a while, so we're going to work on three different boats. I got the Dominator, the Velez, and the 42. Okay, the Velez, I had a pretty bad little tumble, little crash the other day, and uh, we knocked, well, we bent a couple screws. We got to work that out. I broke a, a water cooling nipple off in my rudder so we got to extract that put a new one in probably uh work on the tune on this one it actually ran good i'm trying for 90 with this one so we're going to work that one out the dominator had a little spill the other day i think it landed wrong uh upon landing and we actually bent a couple trim tabs out of place they're no longer in contact with the set screw so we're going to work on that and the 42 here we're going to put a whole new tune on this boat like a whole new tune uh, I've been trying to save my old 106 mile an hour tune and I think I've had some like bad crashes kind of shaked and rattled and, and knocked my tune loose <laughs> so we're going to mess around with CG put a new tune on it get all three boats prepped up for the speed run spot okay so uh, stick around going to jack my jaws and just have a shop day Big B what I glad RC So let's start with the Velez. I, I really want to get this one worked out. Okay, I got a Fly Color 150 OSC Cat Pack, 4074 SSS 2000 KV motor, DS servo. Okay, running the DX5 rugged. Uh, now this strut, the the I really need a new bushing or a new strut for this boat. I've got a Speedmaster bushing I want to put on it. When you're trying for speed, you don't want a whole lot of slop in your in your drive line so we need to work that out but we're going to do that another day i think it'll be okay for several more runs okay so when i when i flipped it i actually uh it looks like it looks like the bracket is straight i just bent a couple screws so that should be pretty simple what i really want to show you guys is how to extract a nipple because this is actually a, a common thing I've done oh, I've done this several times on different boats not just this one and uh, what I use for it's just a little simple screw extractor um, I actually buy like a five or, or a ten pack and uh, of the same same one okay and as you can see here I actually take them and grind the ends down to fit different size holes all right so what I'm going to do is basically heat up the rudder because I, I, I'm pretty sure I put Loctite in there. Okay, the threads should still be in there. So I'm going to heat the rudder up a little bit. And it should come right out for us. Okay, pretty easy. I uh, use this on stripped out screws, you know, Allen screws. All right, well, that was pretty simple. Okay, got it out. All right, now I'm going to go find a new one. I got my box of goodies here. Okay, so um, this is where all my nipples are right here. Yeah, I think this will work. Okay, so that's got a small hole. All right, so we don't want to use that one. The one I had on there, I think I drilled it out. That's why it broke. Okay, so this is a, a nipple off of a, a dynamite. This should work. So I'm actually going to take and... Uh, I'm gonna drill this nipple out. I got an index drill bit right here. And um, I'm just gonna drill it out one size. I, I'm pretty sure that's why my other one broke because I drilled it out, which I don't mind. I don't mind replacing it if it breaks. As long as I'm getting a lot of flow with this Velez, I only run single cooling, okay? And it cools the system down perfect. It's a speed run boat and uh, Trying to keep weight down on it because it's actually a fairly heavy boat as it is. With a big motor in it and uh, big batteries that I like to run on this boat. Alright, so I drilled it out one size. I didn't go crazy with it. That way it don't break off easy in the future. I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on here so it don't back out. And it'll kind of seal up our our water intake here. Okay, so that's done. Just gonna tighten it up with some pliers because that's what I got handy here. All right, that's done. If you drill out your nipple, 
uh, don't over tighten it. You know, don't over tighten it. If you have to, if you drill out the hole, it weakens it. So you know, if you go cranking down on it real crazy, it'll probably break. And you'll have to extract your threads again. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get these out. I'm pretty sure I put Loctite on. All right. This is pretty simple, but uh, if if my bracket's bent. We may need to bend it back into shape. That's basically why I'm showing you this part. But I think it's just the screws. So it is the screw. It was just bent. Okay, so let's take the other one out. Now, I actually recommend um, putting a longer screw in, in this bracket right here. Okay. Uh, with the short screws that come with it, they don't stick out past this rudder bracket. So if you put a longer screw in there and you were to bend or break your screw off in the bracket right here, if you have a longer screw, it'll actually like stick out the end and you'll be able to grab that little piece that's sticking out and remove the broken screw, okay? So that's just something uh, that may be beneficial to some of you guys doing speed runs. If you only, if you just run your boat le leisurely, you probably don't need to do it. And the bottom one, the bottom one there's nothing you can do about it so just put a longer one up top you know if you were to break the bottom one you just have to probably have to drill and retap a, a screw i was actually contemplating doing that anyway i was thinking about putting one two three screws in this drill and tap a new hole uh well we might do that later on okay i'm gonna get a couple screws for this okay okay so it did actually bend my bracket just a little that's the price you pay going fast, you know. Uh, you running RC boats fast or RC cars, uh, you're going to break stuff, okay. Even little boats, even little boats going fast, you break them, alright. This is, this is actually the second time I've bent this bracket right here. That's the only downfall to having a Z bracket, a Z bracket like that, because your, you know, your rudder's way, hanging way off the transom here. In a bad crash, a lot of times that bracket likes to bend out of shape. I found that a pair of adjustable pliers or wrench here, you know, just kind of get it cinched down tight on that bracket and bend it back into shape. Okay, just, you know, don't put too much pressure on the, on the four screws because you'll crack your transom. So did you guys see how I was doing? I was kind of putting some pressure, some back pressure on it, and I just got it bent back into shape here. So let me look at it from a different angle. Make sure it's straight up and down. That's very, very important. Very, very important, okay? So, so that actually looks pretty good. That looks actually looks perfect. Okay, so uh, I got a screw here with some Loctite on it. I'm gonna get it put back together. Once we get it put back together, we're gonna check the rudder. Make sure the rudder's straight up and down. So I got it sitting on a flat top here. Just gonna check the rudder, make sure it's straight up and down. And it looks like it is. You know, you could, I guess you could get your uh, square out and check it, but I usually just kind of visually check it. We got some slop in it here. So what I do to get that slop out is I'll take this bracket, like the, the, the hinge part, I'll take this part of the bracket off. I'll get some channel locks and I'll squeeze this top and this bottom part of the hinge together and uh and then i'll reinstall my bracket once i've got it tight fitting and that usually gets all the slop out i usually have to do that every couple months all right so i got the velez i was using this glass to set up my blackjack 42 i figured i'd throw this in the video um i blueprinted this boat i got all my spots and my whole my whole boat is flat on this on this glass okay if you have a catamaran and you have some wobble back and forth, some teeter tot, or one of your ride pads is higher than all the other ones or lower, uh, it it, it kind of needs to be addressed, you know. Um, mine, it's perfect. It's perfect. It sits on the glass perfect. You guys see that? There's no teeter tot anywhere okay I actually glued some 180 down I got two strips of 180 glued on this glass and uh, when I was almost done with my blueprint I took that with my rudder off my strut higher I went kind of back and forth on that sandpaper and kind of fine-tuned my ride surface so when the boat's riding on glass it's like all all my backs of my steps are on 
the water. You feel me? Uh, it's more than that. It's a lot more than that. Like I, I see the angle I put on the back of my ride pad here. A little angle breaks the surface a little bit better. This, you know, breaks off that step. Okay, and that's how high I've been running my strut with this prop. Okay, with this blueprinted boat. My boat may be different than yours. I got big motor, big batteries, big weight. It's a heavy boat. But that's where I run it, right there. I run, I, that's where I, I, I tend to run this strut on this boat. A little bit, what is that? I got, it's a two, two millimeter hex and the two millimeter fits under there, but it's level. If anything, a little bit of positive angle and that'll actually settle the back of the boat down into the water. Same thing with my Blackjack 24. Now the Blackjack 42 likes some negative angle. I've noticed on the Velez and the 24, it likes some positive angle. It settles the back. It keeps these planted, these four ride pads planted in the water. All right, so um, let's work on another boat. Okay, so I got the Dominator out. Now you guys can really see what's going on here. This is nothing too serious, you know, just something simple. It's happened on my V2 Sonic Wake on the Dominator. It it's happened on my uh, my Delta Force. Any any boat with trim tabs that hang out real far, this will happen. Okay, it's an easy fix. Don't freak out. Don't call Horizon Harbor Hobby or Oxdean saying, "Oh, I want to refund my freaking trim tabs." Bent. Okay, it happens. It, Hell, it happens in just the smallest crashes. <laughs> okay, so don't freak out. All right, it's just a piece of freaking stainless steel, and it can be it can be put back into place. What I do, I mean, you you know, you could take the whole freaking trim tab off and and uh, bend it back into shape that way. But I'm a lazy ass. I got like 30 boats. Okay, that I, that I you know at least five or six boats that i maintain on a regular basis the boats that i'm running at the time so uh you know taking the trim tabs off and working them out that way it, it just don't it's just like to me it's, it's a waste of time but some of you guys might only have a couple boats and uh taking them off that is the right way to do it but i'm just going to use my my needle nose pliers okay i'm not going to tell you guys how to maintain and build your boats i'm just showing you guys what i do on my boats okay this is just a simple easy fast way to do it now of course the trim tabs are bent so there's going to be some kind of bend in our trim tab mine's not bad i don't see a visible hard bend it looks like it's just like a long gradual bend if it had like a you know, a freaking 90 degree bend. Yeah, I'll probably pull them off, but um. So this, I'm just gonna take my needle nose pliers. They're long. I'm gonna put them the length of my trim tab, grab it right dead center with my adjustable screws up so I don't run, like run into my adjustable screws trying to bend it back. And I'm just gonna over bend it back into place, okay? Just gonna over bend it. That way when we, when we put our set screws back on it, it'll be, it'll be, it'll have some tension on it you know and you, you'll be able to adjust it i actually had to do this to these trim tabs out the box okay because they're uh where i wanted to run my trim tabs the trim the set screw wasn't quite contacting it so um i, I just did the same thing out the box and bent my trim tabs up a little bit so my set screw meets up to my trim tabs and i have tension on it you know so I'm just going to kind of bend it up with my with my needle nose trying to keep it as straight as i can you don't want any kind of bend in these tabs so, and then i'm just going to use my hand to finish it off try to keep them straight it's not freaking rocket science i'm actually going to grab it sideways and, and make sure they're lined up with one another okay if it has any kind of little bends in it you need to get it out it actually looks pretty good all right it looks pretty good there and then once I put my set screw down, it'll actually have a little pressure on the set screw and we can adjust it wherever it needs to be, you know. And I bent them up a little farther than what they needed to be bent up. So when we run our set screw back down onto our trim tab, there'll be some pressure on my screw, okay. About right there. I've had one other boat with a dual trim tab set up like this. And um, I noticed whenever I would go down on my outside trim tab right here, it would actually keep the bow down in a turn. And the inside 
it was mostly for straightaways, you know? So, I'm running both of them exactly the same on both sides here. The inside one's almost in contact with the ruler, and the out one, outside one's basically in line with the bottom of the boat. That's how I've been running it, and it seemed to be pretty good. I, I showed you guys the Velez. I'm going to show you the 42 on the glass. I got my Dominator on the glass, okay? And I just took it out for its uh, first speed run. I got 60 mi 69 miles an hour with a 38 millimeter prop on ADES. Okay, 69, 38 millimeter prop. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier with the Velez, I've got these this sandpaper glued on this glass. It's flat, okay, 180. So what I've done with this Dominator, okay, the keel, it has a ride pad, okay? And uh, there was a little hump there's actually still a little hump, but um, I took the Dominator and I ran the keel on on that sandpaper. Okay, I just kind of went back and forth very, very lightly, very lightly. I pull it up, I look at it, use a ruler on the keel. If I wasn't happy, I, I did it a little bit more. You guys see how this, you see how the boat's just sitting on the keel? It's sitting flat, okay? And uh, I think that's the key to a boat with a ride pad. The ride pad's got to be flat. Like, what's the point in having a ride pad if it's not flat? Okay, so I, I kind of flattened mine out, and then I took a piece of sandpaper and rounded the edges so I don't have sharp edges on my ride surface. Uh, on my ride pad, anyway. I noticed, like, on my, my, my Delta Force 35, it has rounded edges, so I rounded them off. I didn't go deep. I didn't go deep. I didn't go down to the to the to the cloth i just knocked uh like uh a thousandth of an inch off just truing it up okay and i got her where she'll sit flat okay you guys see that all right and uh this is where i was running my strut at you guys can kind of see it here on the glass it's got a little bit of positive angle and it settled the back of the boat real nice don't go too much on that keel because you'll ruin the boat you know you just want to just knock down any imperfections literally that's it nothing else man and uh that positive angle she seemed to be doing pretty good right now this tune might change on the boat later on uh depending on what prop i run on the boat will probably change the tune on it but uh it was running good the way i had it okay so i figured i'd throw this in the video <clears throat> all right so i got my 42 i got a sheet of glass here I'm 42 sitting here and i and i see like right off the get-go what's going on here i hadn't set this boat on glass hell i hadn't set it on a flat top and really tuned it since i got that 106 mile an hour run <laughs> i got that 106 mile an hour run i left it alone <laughs> you feel me you know i had it i had it set up right so this is actually the first time i'm setting the boat on glass and uh so what was what what must have happened you guys see how how high my 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 ride pads are off the glass and you see how deep my strut is. Now that's the angle I like to run. That's a flat bottom strut and I like the angle. But uh, what must have happened is my screws here must have at one point or another been loose enough. When I took a hard 80, 90 mile an hour crash, it must have uh, just, my strut must have went deeper. You feel me? Um, the way I have this stuffing tube in the boat, it's actually got some pressure. And when the when the strut's not tightened down, it's it's always pushed. It'll push itself down. You feel me? It'll actually push itself down with the way I have everything set up. So uh, so what we're gonna do is um well first of all I need to straighten out this this bracket. This is the third bracket I've made for this boat, and it's actually the widest bracket I've made. So I'm gonna take all this off real quick and uh, get a hammer. I'm gonna straighten all this out. Okay, so my rudder's straight up and down like we did the Velez, basically. Uh, once we get that straightened out, we can get this strut. I, I like to run the back of my strut in line with the ride, ride surface with, with this angle. I like that angle with the flat bottom strut, but I like to run it in line with the ride surface. Okay, you guys can see it's not really that much deeper. It's about three millimeters deeper than a ride surface okay you could see but what that's doing is it's it's actually causing the boat to ride up off the water with the deeper strut position it actually gets the boat up 
off the water a dry ride. In some cases, that would be okay. But with this boat, with that angle, it's getting up off the water. And with the power, <laughs> with the power I have and the props I'm running, it's wanting to literally, literally pick the boat up off the water. Like I said, I hadn't set this boat up since that 106 mile an hour run. So uh, it's about time to, to change it up, you know. So um, I'm going to get this bent back into shape and I'll cut back in. So I got my bracket straightened out much better, much better. I used a hammer, ball peen there. Left a couple little dings in it. And uh, I, I didn't want to sand those dings out because it would thin the metal out. So, I, you know, I... I don't know if you guys noticed, but I don't really care about looks on my boats more. I care more about performance and functionality, you know. So um, that should work. Okay, while I was out there on my bench polisher, I polished up my rudder, resharpened it, reprofiled my rudder, got everything kind of polished up on this guy, refined and uh, worked out. Okay, so um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put it all back together and we'll start our tune. Okay, guys, so y'all gonna have to bear with me here. Okay, I got the boat on a flat top. I've got my trim tabs raised up, my struts raised up. I've got it tight enough to where I, I can move my strut easily and it'll stay in position, you know? Uh, not too loose to where you, when you set it, it's gonna, it's gonna move or shift on you. The next thing I do, uh, well, on this boat anyway, uh, all boats are different it, and it really depends on how you set them up. Um, is, well, this, I guess you want to have a starting point, okay? So what I do is, uh, I usually start all my boats out with a neutral, a neutral strut position. No positive, no negative, okay? And then I'll kind of go from there with it, okay? I'll drop that neutral start position down in line with the glass, in line with the ride surface, okay? And uh, what I'll do is I'll mark it. I'll get me a scribe and I'll mark I'll mark the top of my strut right here. You, if you can see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I've got marks incrementally on this on this bracket, okay? And what I'll do is I'll basically start in line or I'll start with my strut deeper, deeper than the rest of the boat. You guys see it's got some teeter right there. This is where I started tuning this boat out after I, I did the rebuild the first time the new hull I started I started with it right there okay with this angle I like this little bit of angle on this boat so I'm not gonna go neutral with it I like the little angle it helps and then I ran the boat and if it wanted to do we flip and not want to run right normally if you run it real deep on this boat it wants to like pick it up or cause it to veer real bad so what I'll do is I'll incrementally drop that strut down, okay, until I get the best ride, okay. Since I know this boat, I've had this boat for a year. I've done a lot of tuning. I've got a lot of time under my belt with this boat. Uh, we're not really going to increment. Well, we probably will end up doing some more tuning, but this is where I'm going to start at, okay. I'm going to drop my trim tabs down, not all the way down, okay. Not all the way down in line with the ride surface. I got this gap right here. Four millimeter outside, three millimeter inside gap. See this? And then this side's not quite as bad. All right, so what I do, a lot of guys would say, run it in line with your with your sponsons. And I, I would have to disagree. When you run them inside with your sponson, it causes the boat to, to veer, dig the sponsons up front. It noses it down and it's like uncontrollable in a turn. So what I do is I take this 180 grit sandpaper and I put it on the, the inside, the lowest part, and I'll drop my, my trim tab down so that I can slide that sandpaper under my trim tab okay you see that all right and it's not it's not touching it's not touching the glass it's literally the thickness of this sandpaper from the glass okay that's where i'm going to run them final answer i probably won't move them again that's where i'll run it unless for some reason we run into some odd handling okay i'm gonna do the same thing to the other side drop it down run my sandpaper up under it okay make sure they're both identical all right, identical, okay? And then I'm gonna lock them down. All right, now the strut is where I do all my tuning at with this boat, 
Okay, I don't drop these down all the way. I keep them, like I said, a little bit higher. That's where I found it's best. My boat might handle different than your boat. These boats have some flex. You know, they have... I've actually done some sanding on the bottom of my ride pads. And they're it may handle differently. This is how I'm tuning my boat. And just kind of giving you guys a little guideline on how I tune mine. Okay. So I'm actually... Just knowing what I know about the boat. I'm going to run the back of my strut in line with my ride surfaces okay i'm gonna run it in line with the ride surface so i'm gonna drop this strut down until it it barely touches the glass barely i don't yeah okay yeah so it's literally like a a cunt hair higher than the glass if that okay if that I dropped it down just now and that's too much okay i want it to be in line with the sponsons the back of my strut with that one and a half two degree angle okay i don't want my strut to pick my sponsons up you know i want it to be dead nuts in line with the rest of the boat if 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 anything just a little bit higher okay Okay, so that looks good. That looks good. All right. So I'm basically I'm basically going to lock these bad boys down right here. All right. Got my sandpaper here for reference for you guys. Okay. You guys see that? I can slide the sandpaper under this side. All right. I don't think I'm going to be able to slide it under my strut, but we'll see just so you guys have a reference here. Yeah, so that's... That's barely touching the glass. I can barely run that sandpaper under. And the same thing on this side. Alright. Same thing on this side. Actually, this one needs to go down a little bit more. I'll do that fine-tune off camera. But that's how I'm going to start it off on my first run. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Like I said, all these boats are different. They all handle different. Same, same hull. They all handle different. You know, you might have bigger batteries. You might have lighter batteries. You might have uh, your ESC move forward. Or you may upgrade the ESC. That's going to throw a different weight bias. When the boat was flipping those past few runs, I thought I thought it was from the lighter motor. Because this motor right here is about 60, 70 grams lighter than the stock motor. You know, I thought it was a lighter motor throwing some extra weight up forward. Because the, the last time I flipped it, it was one, I had to wait with those 8600 SRDs. I had to wait real far forward. And she was like porpoising real bad upon takeoff. Once I gassed it, it come up out the water and... I think it porpoised and then it flipped. You know, it hit the water. That when it hit the water, it, it rebounded and flipped over. So um, this is where I'm going to start. Whether it helps you guys or not, it's a whole different story. But uh, maybe it kind of give you something to think about anyway. If anything, you know, uh, I guess next time at the speed run spot, we'll 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 know. We'll know. All right. So uh, I'm gonna put my my breakaways in. I'm gonna tighten everything up. I got blue Loctite on everything. I threw a washer in there under that under that uh easy connector i sharpened and buffed up my rudder rounded off the backs rounded the bottom and um i'm about to buff everything up once i get everything locked in and i'll see you guys next time we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching sorry it was a long video it was a shop video we'll see you next time big b wearing clad rc